Hi, this is Mike Spokus with Madcap Logic, and today I'm going to show you how we go from concept to completion of a 3D animated scene. This isn't a how-to in any particular aspect of 3D animation, but more so just a general overview of the entire process from start to end, just to show you what all is involved in making a 3D animation. So here we go. First I'll open a new file on my 3D software called Maya. The very first thing I need to do is create the 3D character. This is also called a model. I'll set up image planes in Maya to display the character design drawings. I use these drawings as a reference for the 3D modeling of the character. These drawings are traditionally drawn by a character designer. I'll model the character using a technique called polygonal modeling. The trick is to use enough vertices when building the model to give an accurate representation of the character and to allow for proper deformation of the character's joints, but not too many vertices as it will slow down the performance of the scene and make the character harder to work with. Here I'm moving vertices around to sculpt the surface of the geometry. Once a character is modeled, a technique called UV mapping is used to prepare the newly created geometry to accept a painted texture map. A texture map is basically a painting that is projected onto a surface. You could think of it like using an overhead projector to project an image on a wall. In this case we're creating a painting of our polar bear's face, fur, and paws and then projecting that onto his body. The UV maps I create will define where that painting falls on the surface of the geometry. After the UVs are laid out, I can go into Photoshop and paint textures for the character. I'll use the UV layout that I created in Maya as a reference layer in Photoshop and this will tell me where I need to paint. Once the texture is painted, I can go back into Maya and apply the texture to a material and assign the material to the character. To this point, I've only built a static model of the character. There's currently no way to move the character or deform it. So, this is the next step, adding animation controls. This step is often referred to as rigging the character. I'll start by using the skeleton tool to draw a skeleton inside the character. This will define all the joints and pivot points of the character. After establishing where all the joints will go, the next step is to add animation controls onto those joints which will make it easier to select them and move them around. Once controls are created for all the joints, the next step is to attach a model of the character to the skeleton using a process called skinning. First I select the joints of the character, then the skin, and make that connection. After the geometry is skinned to the joints, all the joints must be checked to make sure they deform properly. If the skin starts to look weird when a joint bends, then the weighting of the vertices around that joint need to be modified. Modifying the weighting lets me change how much influence any particular joint has on a vertice. Once the skinning looks good, the character is ready to animate. I'll start animating by opening up a new scene and importing all the elements I need into it. For this particular scene there isn't much. I just need my character, which was just created, and my pre-recorded audio track. Here's what the audio track sounds like. That's it! Art is successful to me when I feel connected to it. By the way, the audio is always recorded beforehand, and the animator will base the timing of the scene to the audio track. Next, the scene needs a pre-designated render camera which I'll use to render the final images. This camera will have the framing of the final shot, and this is the camera that I'll stage all my animation to. I can use other cameras to look at my scene from different angles. Once all the elements are imported, the scene is composed based on my storyboard panel. Okay, now the fun part, animating. For animating this shot, I'm using a technique called Key Pose Animation. I create all the most important poses of the character at different moments in time throughout the shot. Key poses are usually extreme points in a character's actions and emotions. Having good key poses will help give the character believability in life. At this point the character will not move smoothly from one pose to the next. He will just pop from pose to pose. This is usually referred to as a blocking pass or a pose test. The blocking pass will let me establish all my key poses. I can focus on making the key poses work together, the timing of the shot, and also let me focus on the emotion of the character from one pose to the next. At this point I really don't want to be too picky with all the details, but more so, just nail down the overall performance and timing of the actions in the scene. Here's an example of what the final blocking pass looks like. That's it! 
Art is successful to me when I feel connected to it. Once a blocking pass seems to be reading well, I'll start refining it. This is called a rough spline pass. This version I'll start to connect all the key poses with in-betweens. This is the point where I'll start to flesh out the acting and the dialogue of the character. And here's what my rough spline pass is looking like. That's it! Art is successful to me when I feel connected to it. Once the rough spline pass is working well, I'll move on to the final stage which is called a refined pass. In this pass, I'll make sure there are no penetrations or glitches, and all the character's elements are reading well and working together. I'll also polish off the lip sync, eyes, eyebrows, ears, hair, and any other secondary things that I haven't finished yet. Once all this is done, this is what the final animation looks like. That's it! Art is successful to me when I feel connected to it. Once the animation is refined and the performance of the character is where it needs to be, it's time to move on. The next step will be to light and render the scene. First I'll use the color key of the scene which is a small thumbnail painting of what the overall lighting should look like. Lighting in 3D in a lot of ways simulates lighting in the real world. Just like in real life, if there are no lights then everything will just be dark, like you're in a dark room. You can see as I add lights it starts to build the look and the feel of the scene. I'll render one or two frames of the scene to make sure the lighting's where I want it. Once the lighting's good, a lower resolution test render of the entire scene is done. If this looks good, then the final high resolution images are rendered, which depending on the complexity of the scene can take from a couple seconds per frame up to several hours per frame to render. These images will later be composited into the final product. Here the high res images are composited over the background with a compositing program. Now the final product is ready to be written out to any format we need. And here's what the final product looks like. That's it! Art is successful to me when I feel connected to it. I know I ran through this stuff pretty fast, but hopefully it gives you an idea of what's involved in doing even a simple computer animation. If you'd like to see more animation like this, as well as some really cool flash animation, check us out at www.madcaplogic.com.